name's Kurt St. Thomas, and I'm the director and producer of DOA, which is a remake of, kind of a remake, um, of a movie that was made in 1949 originally, and uh, my version uh, takes place in 1949 as well, but in the original, it takes place in Los Angeles and San Francisco, and my version takes place in St. Augustine, Florida, which is where I live. How cool was it to be able to shoot this in your hometown? Uh, it was awesome because uh, I'm kind of a homebody to some extent, and uh, it was great to just be able to, you know, sleep in my own bed and then roll out. And um, basically my house was like home base for the whole movie. And so we would all gather there every day and uh, eat breakfast and lunch and dinner. Um, my living room was uh, the wardrobe. Uh, my dining room was the makeup area. And uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy, but it was cool. So we have some amazing people in St. Augustine who um, are willing to give access like of all kinds and really promote tourism. How do you feel like they were, they just kind of opened the door and said, let's do this? Uh, yeah, pretty much. People, I mean, Alligator Farm let us film there, the Lighthouse. Um, we Did you work with Kathy Fleming mm -hmm. for the Lighthouse? Don't know. Uh, Renee Unsworth was the woman that uh, worked with us, but she doesn't work there anymore. But, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, she really helped it out, uh, helped us out on that. And um, yeah, like the classic car museum, we got a lot of cars from them. Uh, we filmed in the Treasury Building, the Lightner Museum, Price's Barbershop, Evergreen Cemetery, Cheese, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, the Fountain of Youth. So what, I know there's more, but you know. How did you get into filmmaking? Why do you love it so much? Um, I got into filmmaking. Um, well, I studied radio and television in college, and I really started out as doing radio. That was my original like career. And then at one point in the um, like in the '90s, when the independent film explosion started happening, I just I would always love film, and I just saw a lot of people like Quentin Tarantino. And, uh, Robert Rodriguez and Kevin Smith and Ed Burns and there was kind of this explosion of people making low budget movies and I just thought that was really cool and that just kind of started the thing and I ended up just making a movie and is what I love about it is, is I, I play music and um, I edit and I've always I've made thousands of commercials and um, so what I like about it's kind of like taking all these different elements of things that I like in my life, like, you know, art, painting, uh, music, editing, you know, all of photography, you know, all these kind of, th you know, elements into one thing. And that, that's what I really love about it. So why are film festivals really important for aspiring filmmakers? Well, you know, it's, it's great to like, one, just show your work to people that, you know, want to watch it. Um, you know, because sometimes, you know, when you make an indie film and, you know, and you, you don't have Brad Pitt in the film or, um, you know, a big name star, a lot of times people just don't want to watch, you know, they most people don't care and they don't want to watch indie films, which is sad, but, you know, film festivals open that up where, you know, like, like-minded people come and you get to network with people and you get to meet lots of people and, you know, you can develop friendships with people and, um, you know, it doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily, you know, work, uh, with them, but I mean, I, uh, my my first film played in a bunch of film festivals, <clears throat> and then um, I almost won this film festival in Knoxville, Tennessee. I lost the audience award by one vote, but the people that ran the festival loved the movie so much, they asked me to come back as a judge the next year. And then the next year I went, and then I ended up talking to this guy in the lobby, and we ended up going to dinner, and I ended up becoming friends with him. And he's a guy you may know, whose name is Brian Cranston. So you never know who's going to be at a film festival, who else has made a film. You might meet a great cinematographer, or you know, a makeup person, or. Um,
Um, and it's also good to just talk to other filmmakers to hear about like what was their experience, how did they, you know, maybe get around something. Most of the things that I learned about making films was from watching DVDs and watching the director's commentaries on DVDs. And because, you know, sometimes you just hear somebody talk about something and that can really open up your mind and go, oh, that's how they did that. Oh, I see, you know, connect the dots. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, if folks could make it to the film festival, where can they see your talk? Uh, at another film festival. <laughs> Um, right now, uh, that's pretty much the only way you're going to be able to see it is if you go to a film festival. But at some point later on in this year, it'll be streaming. I just don't know exactly where it'll be streaming or when, because I'm still kind of fleshing those details out. But tomorrow we play in the Central Florida Film Festival in Mount Dora. In February, um, we're already confirmed to be in the Magnolia Film Festival in Starkville, Mississippi. And there'll be a few more, so... But you can find us on Instagram, DOA the movie, um, or me, Kurt St. Thomas. Look for you, look up there. Yeah.